morning. I am very thankful for our correspondent Dr. Venkatesh Vallu and our chairperson Sri Madhi Paladu Vijaya. And I want to extend my heartfelt thanks for our beloved principal Sri Madhi Kinnera Sri Devi Ma'am, who is our teacher and guide and always struggles for our improvement. Here, our students are going to present the one act play The Dear Departed, which was written by William Stanley Cockrum. He is a famous English dramatist of group of realistic playwrights, which was often called Manchester School. You know, his remarkable ideas will always make us to realize the facts. And Pia Hockton Goy is going to satirize the degradation of moral values in British middle class families. Now, let us start the play. Yeah, don't open the door. It may be your aunt and uncle. Can I open the door now? 
And so he is gone at last. Yes, he has gone. He was 72 of our flag last Sunday. Now I mean you have emotion to We have all got to like sometime or other. And now perhaps he will tell us all about it. Yes, father had been married this morning. He went out soon after completing his breakfast to pay his insurance. My word, it's a good thing, isn't it? He always was thoughtful in that way. He was too honorable to go on without the his premium. And certain when I came, I found your sister's insurance not being paid. Yes, and when we had finished our dinner, I thought of taking some bit on a tray. Then, he was lying as there if the board as he was asleep. I put the tray on the beaver up, shabby old chest of drugs, and went to wake up. He was quite old. Well, if you go up and look at him, or shall we have the tea first? What do you say, Ben? I'm not particular. Well, then if we tell us, we may have tea first. Yes. And certainly we have to discuss this announcement of papers. I was thinking of that. What would you put? Well, we will think about it after tea and then look through his bits of things and make any so then they all furnish are in his room. There is no sort of uh, valuables or things belongs to him to sort. Except his gold watch he promised that to our Jimmy. Promise it to your Jimmy? I never heard of that. Oh, but he did Amelia when he was living with us, he was very fond of Jimmy. Oh, well, I don't know. Anyhow, there is an incident now. I have received the receipt for the payment he paid this morning. Uh, I have not seen it. Mother, I don't think Grandpa went to pay his insurance this morning. But he went out. Yes, but he didn't go into the town. He met old Mr. Dutter's soul down the street and they went up for St. Smith's church. Do you think he hasn't paid it? Was it overdue? Yes, I should think it was overdue. Something tells me he is not paid. A drunken old beggar. He is done it on purpose just to annoy us. Yes, after all done for him, having to put up with him in the house for three years, it's nothing just sort of spending. I had to put up with him for five years, and he was trying to turn him over to us all the time. And we, have, we don't know the reason for certain is not paying the premium. Victoria, run upstairs and fetch that bunch of keys that's on your grandpa's dressing table. In grandpa's room? Yes. I, I don't like to. Don't be so silly, Victoria. There is no one who can hurt you. We will see that if he has locked the receipt in the bureau or not. Okay then, I'll go along with you. Yes. In where in this things? Where did you pick up it, Amelia? It's new since last I was here. Can we pick it up one day? Yes. Mother, mother, grandma's getting up. What? Don't be so silly, Victoria. Don't you know your grandpa is dead? Grandpa's getting up. The child's crazy. No, and I saw him. He's getting up. And Satan, what you are telling? Hey, listen. What's the matter with little Vicky? Hello, what brings you here? Ask yourself, when? Father, is that you? Of course, it's me. Don't do that, Amelia. What the devil do you mean by this Tom Paul read? You took us with surprise, Father. Are you keeping quite well? What? Are you quite well? Yeah, I'm right enough, but for a bit of headache. Amelia, what the dickens did I do with my new slippers? Aren't they by the earth, Father? I don't see them. Why have you got them on, Henry? Uh, I told to him on to put on the stretch as they were new and hard. Well, I don't call it delicate stepping into a dead man's shoes in such hands. Oh, Grandpa, I'm so glad you're not dead. Hold your tongue, Victoria. What's that? Who's gone dead? Uh, Victoria says she's sorry about your head, Father. Oh, thank you, Uki. But I'm going to fit it better. Why, Ben? You're in mourning? Well, is it you? And Amelia? And Henry, a little Vicky, who's gone dead? Someone in the family? 
No one you know father the relation of pens and what relation of pens his brother damn it i never had one dear dear what was his name then fred all bicep i said when did your brother isaac die australia well i suppose you have only been waiting for me to begin chi i'm feeling hungry hey amelia henry What the devil did you mean by shifting my birwa out of my bedroom? What birwa was it, father? Why, my birwa, the one I brought. Was it the one for the? Ah, uh, that's it. What's it doing there? Black nip, that isn't my clock too. What the devil's been going on in this house? Well, I'll be hanged. I will tell you what's been going on in this house, father. Nothing short of robbery. Be quiet, it's good. I will not be quiet. Oh, I call it double face. Oh no. And you do all such a poor creature that you must do every dirty thing. What she tells you? Damn it all! Will someone tell me what's been going on? Yes, I will. I will not see you rob it. But who's been robbing me? Amelia and Henry. They have stolen your clock and birwa. They sneaked into your room like thieves in the night, and they have stolen them after you were dead. Be quiet, Elizabeth. I will not be stopped. After you were dead, I say. After who was dead? You. But I'm not dead. No, but they thought you were. So that's why you're all in black today. You thought I was dead. That was a big mistake. Oh, father. It didn't take you to start dividing my things between you. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Since your mother died, I have lived part of the time with you, Amelia, and part with you, Lizzie. Well, I shall make a new will, leaving all my bits of things to whomever I'm living with when I die. How does it strike you? You know, father. It's quite time you came to live with us again. We could make you very comfortable. No, he has not been as long he was with you. I may be wrong, but I don't think father will live in fancy on with you after what's happened today. It's a. It seems to me neither of you has any cause to feel proud about the way you have treated me. If I have done anything wrong, I'm sure that I'm sorry, sorry for it, father. And I can say more than that. It's a bit late to say it. Neither of you care to put up with me. No, no, father. Hey, you both say that because of what I have told you about taking my money. Well, since you don't want me, I'll go to someone like this. Come, Mr. Merriweather. You've got to be one of your daughters. I'll tell you what I've got to do. On Monday next, I've got to do three things. I've got to go to the lawyer and alter my will, and I've got to go to the insurance office and pay my premium. And I've got to go to the Saint Philip Church and get married. What? Get married? He is out of his senses. I say I'm going to get married. Who to? To Mrs. John Charles. Who gives her in all else? Well, we have fixed it up a good while now, but I was keeping it for a pleasant surprise. I felt I was a bit of a burden to you, so I found someone who would think it as a pleasure to look after me. Till Monday, then, five o'clock at Saint Philip Church. It, it, it will be very glad to see you at the ceremony. It's a good thing that you have brought the bureau at our downstairs, Amelia. It will be handier to carry it across to the ring walls on Monday. Hello, I'm back. I think you have enjoyed the play a lot. From this play, what do you understand? You have to respect your old parents and care for them. If you won't do that. The old age homes may increase in our society. You know that everyone got the way to get old at some time. So you have to respect and care your old parents. And now let us say introduce the characters in our play. Hey, see Mahinga Ma from tenth class, who is a good merry weather in our play. She is Kohino from tenth class, and she is Amelia Slater in our play. He is Mahanishwa from tenth class, and he is Henry Slater in our play. She is Pallavi from 10th class and she is Elizabeth Jordan in our play. He is Jia Hemant from 10th class and he is Ben Jordan. She is Victoria from she is Vasavi from 10th class and she is Victoria in our play. He is Santosh from 10th class and he is Jimmy in our play. And now it's time to say bye. bye.